So, welcome to this lecture, what's the fuss about fuss? And we will in the first part focus on what it is and how it is done. And then in part two we'll continue with indications, results and complications before we end with part three, where we'll deal with some general questions regarding this new therapy, such as economical considerations, patient population, how many fuss machines there are needed and such. Questions of interest if you are considering to start with this yourself. I have recently started with the FAS and I'm not an expert on this topic. However, I have during the upstart process asked myself many questions and I'm making this presentation in the hope that the answers I have found might be of interest also to others. Even if I consider FAS to be a valuable tool, I believe that the enthusiasm of this new cool tool has sometimes led to a somewhat too positive view and I will here attempt a more critical evaluation. If we start from the beginning, then in 1947 stereotactic functional neurosurgery was introduced and during the following decades lesions were being performed using a wide variety of different techniques, including incisionless procedures such as the gamma knife. And lesional surgery was effective and had an acceptable rate of complications. However, it was mainly limited to unilateral procedures. Modern DBS was introduced in 1987 and has dominated since the millennial shift, mainly because it is a reversible procedure and can most often be safely performed on both sides of the brain. DBS has been a great success and is today an established treatment and the therapy is developing and becoming better and better and much focus has been on limiting the rate of complications and side effects by improved techniques and better implants. DBS is becoming more and more advanced and especially the targeting has improved much due to improved MRI and we can now visualize most of the targets directly in the individual patient. One of the reasons for the relatively high frequency of permanent side effects in the lesional procedures was simply that the lesions were done based on an atlas of the brain and sometimes this would not be in accordance with the individual patient's own anatomy why the lesion would end up in the wrong place resulting in side effects and lack of effect. Thus, the advances in imaging technology and targeting have also led to a renewed interest in lesional procedures, and especially in the form of focused ultrasound. This is not a new technique, but was used early on by, among others, Russell Mayers for movement disorders and by Peter Aron Lindström for lobotomies. But the technique has of course become much more advanced over the years and is now increasing rapidly in the form of focused ultrasound or FUS, also known as HIFU or MRG FUS. The focused ultrasound consists of a helmet with multiple ultrasound sources and a water-based cooling system, which is placed in an MRI machine. The head is shaved and stereotactic frame is mounted as in DBS and the silicon membrane is put on the head for the water cooling during the procedure. And the patient is then placed in the helmet in the MRI. An MRI is performed and the target is identified as in DBS. Most of the 1024 ultrasound beams are then directed towards the target point in the brain. When these reach the brain, the mechanical energy from the ultrasound wave will be transferred to the molecules in the tissue and converted to heat. And with the thermography, we can follow this procedure in real time. However, skull shape, thickness, density and volume can affect the ultrasound beams, and this is also true regarding the homogeneity of the skull bone. The skull density ratio, or SDR, is a measure of the calcification of the skull reflecting the relationship between trabecular bone and cortical bone based on a CT scan. According to the current FDA recommendations, only patients with an SDR of 0.4 or higher are candidates for FUS. But in Europe, the manufacturer Insitec suggests that patients with a 0.35 or above might be suitable. In patients with a lower score, it has been considered difficult to deliver sufficient energy to the target area to heat it to the necessary temperature to produce an irreversible lesion. 
In this study on 246 patients from Taiwan, half of the patients did not meet this criteria, and that is the case in many Asians. While in this study of emergency CT scan from Toronto, it was 37%. It was suggested to us that this was because of the large Asian population in Toronto, but the figures are consistent with our own initial experience in Sweden, where of 22 patients otherwise suitable for FAS. 41% failed to reach the FDA-approved STR of 0.40, and 27% failed to reach even 0.35. When you speak with the most experienced users, some will tell you that they will accept an STR that is much lower, and usually they will get a good effect on the tremor, even though it will require more energy and time and might be painful. Others very experienced users will tell you that they have tried, but then decided to stick with an STR of at least 0.4, since they found that even if it was possible to achieve a good effect on tremor at a lower STR, this will result in more diffuse lesions with more side effects. Here we see the difference between a higher STR of 0.52 and a lower of 0.39. And you see that in the latter case, the lesion has a smaller necrotic core and the edema is asymmetric, off-center and diffuse, extending into the internal capsule. Regarding the target for the FAS phalamotomies, there are now two randomized studies suggesting the PSA, the posterior subphalamic area, to be a better target for DBS than the VIM in tremor patients. And during the lesion era, this was a common opinion, but it was also considered that the risk for side effects was higher in the PSA. With FAS, most people will target the VIM, typically at one quarter of the ICL, anterior of the posterior commissure, 14 mm lateral of the midline, and 2 mm above the ACPC plane. A few will use the PSA as an option but my impression is that there is rather a trend towards a more superior target to avoid side effects. Tractography is used by some, but my impression is that even they rely mostly on atlas coordinates. And better and better direct imaging of the VIM is being developed and will probably be commonly used within a few years. Anyhow, the procedure will start with one or several so-called low-power sonications, where the target area will be heated to about 42 degrees, which will result in a transient deactivation. This allows for intraoperative testing, if the effect is not good, or at least visible, or if side effects appear, then the target will be moved accordingly and a new sonication performed. When the final target has been decided on, a high power sonication is done to reach a temperature above 56 degrees, resulting in cell death and necrosis. These sonications are done with the MR thermometry guidance, where the temperature increase in the target area can be followed in detail. The lesion of one sonication will typically be 1 to 3 mm in diameter, but it is also possible to combine several small lesions to one larger if desirable. The effect is immediate and the whole procedure with an experienced hand take about two hours and the patient can return home the same day, but many centers prefer to keep the patient overnight. FAS does not exist in isolation and it makes most sense to compare it to DBS and if we look at the advantages of FAS, then it is incisionless, skin and bone are not opened and the brain is not penetrated. It is a considerably faster procedure the hospitalization time is shorter, and it can be done as an outpatient procedure. When FAS is working, the patient is more or less cured from the symptoms at the end of the treatment, while DBS is only hiding the symptoms, and it requires a lifelong follow-up. The workload is lower with FAS. FAS is probably cheaper, at least considering unilateral procedures and provided that a significant number of patients are being treated at the individual center. FAS can be performed also in very old and frail patients, and the risk for hemorrhages and infarctions is much lower and there is no risk for infections or implant-related complications, and the patients have a more positive view of FAS. Regarding the disadvantages of FAS, 
then it is mainly limited to unilateral surgery and thalamotomies for tremor, while DBS can be done bilaterally for many indications in several targets. FUS is an irreversible procedure, with a higher risk for transient and irreversible side effects from the lesion itself, and the effect is probably not as good as with DBS. So with FUS we can eliminate the complications which might occur along the way to the target area, and we can thus avoid pneumocephalus, brain shift, extracerebral hematomas, intracerebral hematomas, edema along the electrode, infections and implant-related complications. But with FUS, our ability to control and adjust what is happening in the target area itself becomes more limited. The areas in the brain that we want to stimulate or lesion are not physically isolated entities. They are bordered and entangled in other structures, where stimulation will cause unwanted side effects. With the DBS, we thus need to find stimulation settings that will mainly encompass the intended target area. And with DBS, we can tailor this field in great detail with consideration to the encountered effects and side effects. However, with lesions, we get only one chance, why it is unavoidable that FUS will result in more complications from the target area and neighboring structures. So, that is the theory, but what about the effects in reality? Well, I have only made 10 procedures during the last four months, so my personal experience is too limited to be of any interest. However, the installation process was smooth, and the training and support which we have received from Insight Tech has been good. Further, it is indeed an elegant procedure, and so far we have been happy with the outcome. But to get a better understanding, we need to turn to the published experience. And Insight Tech has of course been involved in many of the major studies, as is perfectly natural. Others are funded by the Focused Ultrasound Foundation, whose mission it is to make focused ultrasound available in the shortest time possible. And Insight Tech and the Focused Ultrasound Foundation have a close collaboration, and it was stated in 2014 that the FUS machine was created through this partnership. Unfortunately, the foundation does not disclose their donors, why I don't know if there is any direct or indirect funding of the foundation by Insight Tech. Anyhow, regarding the effects of FUS, then it has recently often been repeated that it is actually as effective as DBS, but with a better quality of life. And still after five years, the tremor will be improved by 73% in patients with essential tremor. And it seems also to be a good option for Parkinsonian patients with other symptoms and tremor, where FUS pallidotomy is providing an efficacy response of 69%. However, we need to look closer at these figures. But that will be the topic for the next part of this presentation. Thank you for your attention.